Welcome back, everybody, to the locker room. I'm your host, Will Wright. And I'm your co-host, Hayden Dressler. We're back with another episode brought to you and affiliated by Rebel Walk. Anything that we talk about, there's probably already a story about it on their website. Go ahead and check out the link in the below. I mean, you can get probably more information from them than you can from us. But we did a couple things to talk about today. Number one, uh, let's start with Jackson Dart's historic NIL deal, becoming the first ever college player. I, I don't. I'm, there might be pros, but definitely the first college player to ever be sponsored by a private jet company. It's Nicholas Air, correct? Yes, correct. It's uh, it's it's very impressive. Um, and not many people knew about this company. It's more of a well, obviously, it's, it's not exactly some college students would be paying for. It's mm-hmm. not a well-known among our age group. But they are their headquarters is based in Oxford, and it is a $1.4 million deal. Gets access to flights. I don't know the details of if there's requirements for the flights or what level of flight he gets, you know, how fancy we're talking here. Mm-hmm. But uh, that that's just that's huge. That's insane. I don't know what that brings him up to right now in NIL status, but uh, I believe he's the deal was worth about one point four, and last episode we said one point two that he was at currently at one point two. Yeah, yeah. So I think we're sitting around two point six somewhere yeah, around somewhere, there. So somewhere around there, he's definitely now one of the highest paid <clears throat> college football players at the moment. Which I mean, if I'm being honest. It's it's a little shocking to me that he that of all the players in college football, he's the one that gets to make this deal. I mean, oh, I'm all for it. We love Jackson. We don't. I don't I mean I don't got a problem with it. But it's it's kind of like, you it's know, there's cool. there's, it's, there's there's it's super cool. Like there's a lot of guys who are like a little bit more well known. Like mm-hmm. unless you really follow SEC football or you're an Ole Miss fan, you really don't know that much about Jackson Dart. You you've heard his name thrown around. You've heard his name in games, and you've heard mm-hmm. it on. The ESPN app and like some talk shows just thrown around, maybe rankings, you yeah. Know. But uh, I think it's cool because if you really look at it, so I looked it up. Flight plans are starting at around two hundred thousand dollars. It's like a membership, like a little card, mm-hmm. and it only goes up from there. So like, even if you just didn't get straight cash, even if you just got free flights, like think about how much money that is in general. True, and we know he's from <laughs> Utah, and then also his girlfriend goes to school. I'm pretty sure in Utah. I'm not sure, but he's maybe so. His his family, his girlfriend, and even him, they're going back and forth all the time. So I think that's yeah. going to work out pretty well oh. for him, for sure. Huge business move here. <laughs> but I mean, but I mean, hey, I mean for the. What 2024, 2025 uh, Heisman winner? I mean, come on! Like he's he's he's, yeah. he's got the Heisman in the bag. I I'd I'm like delu- to think so. Let's I am a delusional so. Ole Miss fan. Hey, fingers crossed. He's got a fingers chance. Crossed. He's uh, he's t- I think he's like top five in odds. Yeah, I, I'm I'm seeing different stuff on Instagram, and then of course you you look at like the ES SEC now, and they're just throwing up these rankings all over the place. I don't think we're going to know till about three or four games in next season. So there's really no way of telling. Well, so. I think the future looks bright. I mean, all we did about it is our team got stronger, and he definitely wants it more than ever. So Hey, I'd put money on it now. I'd put money on it. Really? If I was a betting man, I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyways, speaking of betting, what do you think are the odds are that Ole Miss actually makes a tournament? Considering last episode we were talking about being a 10-11 seed, and now we're not even in the tournament. Yeah, we were we were first four out for the Bama game. Bama game hit us hard. Uh, the score does not reflect how close that game was. Uh, we were it was a, just a tight race. We were leading at halftime, and then they pulled ahead within the last four minutes of the game. Um, <clears throat> let's see here. I don't. I couldn't even really tell you where we are right now. Definitely not a bubble team, not first four out. In order in order for us to even have a chance, we got to we got to whoop up on Georgia and hope that A&M beats the the certain certain teams lose and certain teams win. LSU's got to lose, State's got to lose. We're neck and neck with those two. We got to whoop up on A&M. We got to own the SEC tournament. We got to make it as far as possible, even win it, really. Um <laughs> it, but as of right now, th- our fate is not in our hands. So, unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, it it is sad to see that you know we fell pretty far, but I mean at the same time you got to look at it this way: we actually got close to the tournament this year. I mean, we haven't even been like in the running, and 
who knows how long. Mm-hmm. At least we're not Mizzou and have a super hyped up season and start the season ranked and then win eight games. We haven't even been a thought in years. Mm-hmm. It's been years. So, so, in my opinion, if Chris Beard stays, which I think he will, I think for a lot of people it's a good 50-50 shot because he's definitely going to get a big off from a big school. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Duke lets their coach go. I mean, for Duke standards, they're not performing, even though he's a fantastic coach and he's doing great things over there. I think for Duke standards, I don't know. I, I honestly could see them shocking the world. I think that's kind of like my little sleeper offseason pick. I think that's going to be the big the big thing. Maybe so. Maybe so. I'm okay. I'm actually really heavy on Tennessee right now. Really? Uh, just because, like, no injuries, everyone's completely healthy, and you don't see that everywhere. You know, everyone on their team is healthy, and they're looking really good. Do you think so. Tennessee's going to win the whole thing? I'm, I'm going to make a number of brackets, but I have them at least making it to the championship. I'm going to make about way. 20 million brackets with every possible outcome. I will win money. Okay. I might be like, bet like 20 mil and then make like $5 back. But you know what? I did win $5. Do you do you want to do like head-to-head bracket? Absolutely. Do you want to mm-hmm. see who? We'll, we'll put Nolan in it too. So he's yeah. just part of the crew we'll, now. We'll get, we'll get Nolan in there. Uh we can get a couple of friends, a couple of guests in there, yeah. but we'll we'll get Ooh. something going. Oh, locker room challenge! A little lock, locker room. I'm challenge. up for a challenge. I'll win just like I did for the uh, the Pro Bowl. I mean, not Pro Bowl, the bowl games. Yeah, bowl games. Um, we didn't really get to talk about it much. We did do a competition for the bowl games, and I whooped everybody. Just saying. He won by one, one game. Who was in second? Kyler. Huh. And then I was right behind him. So. Well, no one got whooped. So, well, speaking of getting whooped, how about Iowa? Yeah, Ole Miss yeah. baseball really, really took care of them, except for the first game. Good, uh, good little series this weekend. Uh, Could have played better Friday, but we uh, we took care of business Saturday, Sunday. Mm-hmm. You know, especially Sunday. Sunday was a little nervous, a little nail biting in there, but uh, we pulled ahead. I so. I think the problem with us is just inconsistency. Oh, like we yeah. we have the ability, like we we've shown that like we can play real well. I think the problem is, I mean, being a guy who played baseball pretty much my entire life, a lot of stuff like that and like the inconsistency, it really comes down to me- being mentally prepared for it. Like you'll just kind of go in and be like, oh, you know, this team isn't that good, and then you walk in just thinking like, oh, it's gonna be an easy game, and then you get whooped. Our biggest problem is we have the talent to compete and to win. But we always just play down. We play down to whatever competition we have, like on our field. Exactly. Yeah, um, I, that's I, I could see that because I, I like I think that plays into what I was saying. It's like they just kind of walk in with like the mentality of oh this team's not that good, we don't gotta try that hard. Mm-hmm. I, they just need to get into the habit of every single game you're playing LSU, you're playing Wake Forest every game. It's like you gotta be at your absolute highest level. So um, I gotta say though, like the weather this <clears throat> weekend, absolutely gorgeous. I, you, you honestly you couldn't have asked for any better weather for a baseball game. Like when I mean, you think of baseball weather, it was this weekend. Just I absolutely. Mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah. I was sitting there, like going, just walking to and from the gym, just being like, I would love to play baseball right now. Mm-hmm. It's the weather, the best uniforms in college baseball, beer showers, and whoop in Iowa, which I got close connections to. I don't think you can get a better weekend. That's right. Those cream color uniforms. Those do look Those sharp. Are- those look good, man. We got the creams, we got the the baby blues, and we got the pinstripes. Like, what else could you need? Mm-hmm. Best uniforms in college baseball. Them and uh, I think Vandy's got some pretty cool combos. I mean, I think, I think everybody knows Vandy's got cool combos. I mean, as Saints fans, that that black and gold looks pretty, mm-hmm. pretty damn good. Mm-hmm. But uh, I mean, for one thing, I will say is when we're we we whooped. Uh, I think it was Hawaii. We're beating Hawaii pretty good to start the season. And we threw in Aiden Williams. The He's one of our backup quarterbacks. I think he's going to be a stud when his time comes to shine. They gave him the rock on the mound. That kid's different. He, that kid is performing. He performed well for about three innings Saturday. I watched him a little bit there. Mm-hmm. And now they're wow. they're consistently putting him in there, and he's consistently he's, he's painting the zone. So, I mean, I think especially as a freshman, 
we give him some more time to develop, keep giving him the rock, keep trusting him, that guy's going to be a dog. Mm-hmm. Absolutely going to be a dog. I'm excited to see where he where he ends up and how he turns out, to be honest with you. Do you think so. we'll make we'll go to Omaha? Do I think so? Mm-hmm. I don't know, man. Me saying we're going to go to Omaha be like saying, like, I'm going to find a rainbow tomorrow <laughs> for sure. Like, for that's sure. like – Too early to there, tell. There's no way of knowing that. Like, Do you think we have a chance? I think everyone's got a chance, dude. There's, I mean, yeah, we have a chance. Mm-hmm. We have a chance. We have a chance every year. Honestly, I didn't think we had a chance the year we actually won it. <laughs> True. So, I don't know. That's, that's a pretty – pretty vast question you got there that's true so. i mean that's fair i mean we got got some time to think about some stuff to talk about it, it's a waiting you just you gotta wait you gotta get into the season there's a whole cycle of like being an old miss fan during mm-hmm. baseball season it's like you know season starts we win a few games you know we are so up and then we're not up mid-season <laughs> and then season's ending and then they start picking it up and they start winning games games left and right you know, that's the that's the thing about baseball is like you can be like the first couple of weeks of the season you cannot win a single game, and then all of a sudden you can pick it up. Like the the Philadelphia Phillies, one of my favorite teams, they were horrible to start the season, like one of the worst teams in the MLB, and then they just kind of they they started picking it up a little bit, and then at the end of the season they just turned it on and they couldn't lose, and then they made it all the way to the NLCS, and they they lost barely. But to the Diamondbacks, I think it was uh, Game Six or Game Seven they took them to. Okay. But still, that's pretty big from being one of the, going from like absolute bottom to almost making it to the very top. Oh, oh yeah. So I mean, I I think that I mean, really anybody can make it. But as of right now, I would say Wake Forest looks good. I think Coastal Carolina could surprise people too because I mean every week they're moving up like four spots in rankings. So them and then Tennessee is always scary. Um, mentioning Wake Forest, did you happen to catch that Duke and Wake Forest game where they stormed the court? I did. I did. So, but because of that game, like they're having talks of just like you cannot, you cannot storm the court. There'd be like repercussions, like serious ones, not just a fine. Like mm-hmm. possibly you lose the game or you forfeit a certain amount of home games or something like that. Right. So, what's your what's your thoughts and opinion on that? Well. I mean, I think for one, I, 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 football-wise, I don't think they should take away storming the field. I think that's a big part of it. But basketball, is, you know, the court's different. It's smaller. There's less room. I don't necessarily know if maybe taking it away completely should be. I, I think maybe they sh- it should be like, you know, give the players some time to get off the court so someone doesn't get hurt. Well, it's it's hard, obviously, because, like, Dealing with this kind of thing, it's an all or nothing kind of thing. Right. You can't just say, oh, well, reserve it for something special and then wait till the players are off the court. That's true. Because no no drunk fan's going to listen to that. That's true. Especially when we when we beat LSU. It no. was like literally the second that ball hit the ground on fourth down, it Everyone's was, we're, going, we're there. Over the wall, across the field. Yeah, I mean that's uh, that, that's a fair point, but I, I saw that they're saying like they're thinking about doing like a million dollar fine towards the school. Yeah, and like I saw that, I'm like, yeah, that could help. But if I'm being honest, like as a student, that's not my problem. It's it's a shame. It really is a shame because it storming the field used to be like reserved for like you know some really special moments, mm-hmm. and now like you have people just storming the field when they beat like Kansas State. Or, like, right. honestly, anybody. It could be, like, you win by a field goal. Time to go storm the field. True, yeah. <laughs> or you could, I don't know, you could beat, like, you could beat, like, number 10 Auburn and be like, oh, we're going to go storm the court now. Like The, the only reason I, I could see doing it, like, like you said, like, by a field goal. I remember watching at the beginning of last football season, Mizzou beat Kansas State, like you said. Mm-hmm. By a field goal, the only reason I could see that being a reason to storm the field is because Mizzou wasn't even ranked. And at the time, Kansas State was ranked like I think close to the top ten. Well, yeah, I, I know the, but those games happen every week. Those what I'm what I'm getting at. That's it, true. It used to be like if you beat number one Alabama, and like you were not supposed to win at all, then it was like yeah, we're storming that field. How do you feel about us charging the field about LSU? See, I 
I had mixed feelings about it, dude, because I was like, LSU was ranked like what number ten? They were which like is impressive. They like were like eleven. Yeah, and we were only like four spots behind them or something. Like yeah, that. we were like you know, it was a good close game, but it wasn't like we just beat Georgia or we just beat Alabama. LSU is a very beatable team. I they were the, at least this past year. I don't know how they'll be this year. I think the thing but. for us is just because it was LSU. I think it's just because school that it was. I think that's because, you know, big The Magnolia SEC, Bowl. Magnolia Bowl, yeah. SEC rivalry. Yeah. I think that's really why. Well, no, but, like, we've had so many close games with them over the years. And we've never – I think it makes us look kind of tacky just because, like, if the same thing happened in Death Valley, same exact situation, just rolls reversed. I really don't think they would have stormed the field. No, I mean, I I feel like it's just I mean, Mizzou. I mean, not Mizzou. LSU has been, you know, they've yeah. been one of the football powerhouses for a long time. It's like we've been as Ole Miss, we've been very inconsistent. We've always been com- like com- 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 we've always been competitive, but we've never been like, you know. I mean, LSU just won a national championship a couple of years the, ago. Look, look, I'm not a nork. My thing is 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 just act like we've been there before. Act like we've been here. Or at least act like we've been here in the past 40, 50 years. Um, you know, so that that's kind of what I'm getting at is uh, be excited. But, like, be careful about it. Because, like, when you don't reserve it for this really special moments, that's how it gets taken away. Fair. So Fair. I mean, it's kind of like spoiling yourself a little yeah. bit. But, I mean, do you think we'll storm the quarter, I mean, the field at all next year? I think we will. If we beat Georgia, we will. Mm-hmm. Georgia's yeah. if Georgia's remaining like top four and they're still performing the way they did this year, and uh, you know they're projected to win the whole thing. Even if we're all I, also top, if we're both teams are top five, if we're that's if, yeah. Well, maybe yeah. I would honestly say even if we're number two and we're number and they're number one, I yeah. Because I mean they they've been like the powerhouse, and it's like. That would be, I mean, probably their first regular season loss in, what, three, four years? In the moment, none of that's going to matter. But in my opinion, like, yeah, I guess that would be well-deserved. Right. So, But, I, I mean, I do hear what you're saying about LSU, but I won't let you take this from me. It was, huh. it was one of the coolest moments That was a cool life. moment. Hey, look, I was right there with him. <laughs> I saw it happen. I'm like, well, I'm just going to, like, scoot my way down here real quick, you know, because I know what's about to happen. Were you Were you with me for that? No, I was a few rows over. I yeah. was with Jacob, and Jacob did not storm the field for some reason. Really? I don't know. He, I don't know why. Oh man! I met him at the the gate down there, though. <laughs> yeah, I was with. Uh, so, I was with Danny and Nolan, I think. Okay. And then Kate, and then her friends. But I mean, that's I mean that's about all I got. Um, speaking of college football, we we got kind of stuck on that for a minute. I'm gonna. Have you heard about the uh, Manziel's tweet? His announcement, he's removing himself from yeah. the Heisman ceremony until Reggie Bush gets his trophy back. Yes. And I'll be honest with you, I full-fledged agree with that. I do too. 100%. I full-fledged agree with that. I think really everyone does. I think it's like it's similar to like how, you know, when they decriminalize certain drugs mm-hmm. and like people get long, long charges for just possession. And like nowadays, like people are arguing that they should, you know, be have their sentence – either revoked or, like, lessened or something yeah, like that. Yeah, and then, and then, I mean, the thing is, is, like, I mean, Johnny Manziel himself literally has said multiple times, like, I probably did way worse things. Oh, he did. Have you seen his documentary? Yeah. Yeah, yeah see, like, he's he's brilliant. He's brilliant the way he did it. But, like, man, dude, like, they can't do anything about it now. I think it's awesome that, you know, he, he was able to tell us all this. But Reggie Bush did a lot less, so Very much less. less. So I looked into it, his parents, so he received, he received a car and then he received like free maintenance on the car, free tires, free stuff like that. And then his family, actually his, his, his mom and dad, they lived in a house for about a year in California for like rent free pretty much. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know what happened after that, but that's pretty much the extent of it. And then there was like recruiting stuff too. There was like, they gave him food and like certain happies and stuff like that but right whatever i mean i i don't know i just think like he deserved it i mean especially i mean he was it wasn't just like oh you know like he, he got the highs because he was the best player he was dominant 
yeah. still to this day. He's one of the best Heisman winners ever. He paid his dues. He did yeah. his time. Exactly. You know. And then he went on to the NFL, the Saints legend. I mean, like, he still showed that he can mm-hmm. do his thing. It's like, it is not, even if, like, weed was still an issue and still a super illegal drug, it's like, now, I lost my train of thought. God damn. We're talking about, like, NIL stuff. Oh, yeah, I'm but like, I mean, but like, I'm talking about like his, like them taking his Heisman away and stuff. It's like, even if it was, it was still illegal, it's like, it's not about that. I mean, Baker Mayfield got arrested. It's and like, they didn't do anything about that. It's like, it's about their performance and how mm-hmm. well they play. He didn't take performance enhancing drugs. If anything, the reason we was illegal is because people thought it would, it would take your performance down. Mm-hmm. And it would like slow your brain down and right, you know, fry your brain, rot your brain, whatever, whatever you want to call it. And he still performed like that. That has nothing to do with his performance. So why would you? I don't understand why they took it away in the first place. That, I mean, that's the same thing with like, I, mean, I could go into stuff like this a, a lot. Like Barry Bonds should be in the Hall of Fame. Who cares that he did steroids? Steroids don't make you hit the ball. They make you hit the ball farther. And but it, he was hitting the ball 500 feet. It only takes 400 to get over the fence. Mm-hmm. He still would have had the same amount of home runs, and he still would have been just as good. But, like, you know, I mean, Reggie Bush didn't even do drugs or steroids. It was that the reason he got taken was because of compensation from the school. Like, he was getting paid to play, essentially. That's what I'm saying. Oh, I do for – Yeah. For some reason, I thought it was, it was like marijuana or something. No, it's uh, no. I'm sorry. I was using that as an example oh, okay. of why they should give him his trophy back. Because like now that it's legal for like him to receive compensation from like companies in the area for him to play, that's essentially what that was. Like the company called in, the. I'm sorry. The university called in favors from local companies, and they just kind of like. Give him perks I mean, here and there. That's not his fault. So, and once again, like I said, that doesn't affect his play at all. I mean, you're a college kid. Didn't exactly come from like the most financially stable background. Of course, you're going to take something like that. Well, yeah. I mean, like, like, that's you're, they're, they're waving it in your face, and they're like, "We can protect you," and like, no one will ever find out. I, I mean, I think it should be like, find him and find the school. Don't take his Heisman away. Don't don't let not you know. Put his name up there on the stadium. Don't like not let him sit in the the Heisman chair and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Like that's to me that's that's kind of bullshit. So I mean I don't know. I I agree with Manzel. I think that a lot of other Heisman. Should, I think this needs to become a big movement because it's kind of getting to a point where this, especially with NIL, like this is ridiculous. Like we just started the episode off with. Like we went from getting your Heisman taken away because your, you know, your school's illegally paying you to our quarterback just signed a deal with a private jet company for $1.4 million. The, um, what was it? The past two Heisman winners have made a combined two, $2 billion in, uh, NIL stuff. So, yeah. I'm like, really? Yeah. What, Daniels and Young? No, wait, I might be the past three. I'm sorry. There's, uh, Manziel was comparing it. You know, don't quote me on that. Manziel was comparing the past Heisman winners, like NIL revenue, to mm-hmm. like what Reggie Bush actually got. No. It was like insanely it's... different. It might have been two million, actually. It might have been two million. Dude, two billion is out of this world. Crazy. Yeah, I, w- yeah. I was going to say, I'm like, or 200 huh? million. I don't even know. I mean, still, that's an absurd oh. amount of money for a college student. At this point, like, you could throw any number at me and tell me, like, this quarterback's making that much for playing at, like, Tennessee, and I'd believe you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> I don't know, man. It, I don't know. It's, I mean, it's wild. And it's also, like, when you think about it, with these NIL deals, it's not just, you know, Jackson Dar's not just making 2.6 mil. He's making 2.6 mil a year. Like, he, like, last year he made 1.2. This year he's going to make 2.6. The dude literally could never work a day in his life and be set for life mm-hmm. just from graduating college. And then I'm going to go get out of college and have, you know, unbelievable student debt. But, I mean... That's, I mean, it's it's kind of insane. And then they're going to go in the NFL, and then there's going to be money hungry like Caleb Williams. I don't even want to get into that. We've already had a uh, Things I Hate episode, and me and Nolan laid into Caleb Williams. So I don't even want to go into that, but I, I don't got much else to say. He is he is the Drake of college football. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Prayer's going, but thank you everyone for watching. Thank you everybody for listening. 
Uh, Hotty toddy, good night.